Hello, and welcome back to Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and today I'm going to be walking you through a game between Nikita Vichugov and Jordan Von Forest. Uh, I'll never pronounce the names of these players correctly, but that doesn't matter. I can pronounce their chess correctly. That's right. E4, E6, D4, D5. We're in a French defense today. White plays knight c3, which might be the best move. Depends on who you ask. Knight f6, which might not be the best move. Depends on who you ask. And after e5, knight fd7, we see the line knight c... Or, I'm sorry, knight ce2, not knight fe2. And this is not the main line. These days, I think the main line is giving black some problems, but black chose to avoid it with knight c e2. The main line, of course, being f4. That's what I was just miming there. So we see knight e2, c5, c3, knight c6, putting some pressure on this d-pawn. Once again, f4 is the main idea, but white delays this by playing knight f3. Now after bishop e7, a3 is white's choice. Black goes ahead and castles. Now we see knight f4 putting some pressure on these black pawns, but queen a5, it's highlighting the fact that by moving this knight, you are no longer defending your d-pawn, and this might cause you some problems. And here, white played a very, very strange move. Um, that move is bishop d3. And so you French players out there might be able to spot the problem, but uh, if you want, go ahead and pause the video at home and try and find black's best move here. Okay. All right, if you're a true French player at heart, you probably rubbed your hands together and laughed at your opponent and said, Ha! You hung a pawn. What a moron. What a moron. He hung a pawn. Except you probably didn't take it like this, even though you could have. You took it with your knight because you're very, very strong. You're a 2650 reader player. Knight takes d4. Knight takes d4. C takes d4. And everybody is laughing at Nikita Vichugov for hanging his pawn. Um, of course, this pin makes things very, very awkward. If you try to break this pin with a move like b4, I'll simply play queen c7. And this is really highlighting the, uh, the mistake in your play. If you want to play c takes d4, I can give this check. Four king, king, and rook. And after bishop d2, there's just enough pieces on the d file for me to get away with queen takes d4 without hanging a queen to this tactic. And this might have been what uh, Nikita missed in this case. So... As always, the true French players always win a pawn in the center. And in this case, that was the advantage Jordan needed to uh, try and make this game go his way. We see queen h5 from him. And now, in this case, the best way to deal with this queen coming out here is to play the move f5. Uh, it doesn't look like the most natural way to play, but in this case, it is the best. g6 is simply a little bit too weakening here. White can get away with a draw after the move knight takes, and bishop takes, and after the double piece sacrifice, there's no shelter left for this king, and you're going to see this game end in a draw. So, you have to play f5 if you want to try to win the game. You can also play the move h6, but this move is also a little bit too, too weakening, uh, although maybe this line is also quite good for black. f5, though, is his choice. And I hear you at home screaming it at your computer screens. Why not knight takes e6? Well, shut up, and I'll tell you, knight takes e5, and there is a threat to the bishop that you have to look out for. There's no time to take on f8. I will take on d3 with check. And if you try to come capture my knight, I will take on f2, reroute to e4, and then capture your knight at my leisure. So the tactics work out with f5. White goes ahead and castles, but now after knight takes e5, black is taking a second pawn and defending his e6 square. c takes d4, recaptures one of the pawns, and do we take this bishop? No, we do not. This bishop's bad, thanks to our pawns on f5, and we want to pressure the white center, so knight c6 instead. We see bishop e3 now, and after bishop f6, the pressure on d4 is mounting. Knight e2 makes an attempt to defend this, but after queen b6, we once again are attacking all of white's weaknesses, which makes things very, very difficult for Nikita. We see king h1, uh, stepping off of this diagonal, and perhaps preparing to bring a rook to g1 with some ideas. Uh, bishop d7 is the simple reply by Jordan. And after b4, defending one of the weaknesses, rook ac8, 
Uh, note that he doesn't try to get greedy and capture this pawn, putting himself into some unfortunate pins. He just simply develops his pieces, gets his pieces into the game. He's always going to be up this one pawn, and he just needs to activate his pieces, stay st or keep up with white in terms of activity here. After rook a c1, we see knight e7, offering a trade along the c-file, rook c5, and black goes ahead and actually captures this rook on c5. And we see this nice change in structure now, which after queen c6, uh, it's a little bit unclear who this change in structure favors. Of course, white now has some chances to expand on the queen side, but the black center is now completely uncontested. And I think in the end, this turns out to be a good thing for, for black here. Knight d4 from white. Queen a4 is a safe square, which attacks a weakness. Rook a1 defends the weakness. And you might want to be a little bit careful here. If you don't do anything, I think the move, uh, moves like bishop c2 start to threaten to trap your queen. You do still have the a6 square for the moment, but you do start, uh, you know, you, you start have to, you have to start being careful. Excuse me. Uh, in the game, we simply see bishop e8 giving this queen this square if it ever needs it. Hitting this queen as well, so queen h3. And now after knight g6, I hear you at home again saying, why can't I take this pawn? I want to take this pawn. And the answer is you, you hung your rook. So maybe you weren't saying that at home. Maybe it was just me. Uh, instead, we see bishop c2, queen a6, rook b1, uh, stepping out of this pin, but now our queen defends laterally. We still see bishop f7, defending this pawn just in time. f4 is white's choice, trying to slow down uh, some play in the center for black. This queen comes out to c4. And now, after some maneuvering, this queen is very, very active. Black has kept his extra pawn, and the end is coming for... Uh, white. Knight takes f4 is a nice tactic to kind of seal the deal. After bishop takes, we simply take this knight on d4, regaining our piece. Uh, we see queen c3, bishop c3, this bishop comes out to d6, rook c8 is black's move, and now after b5, uh, bishop b2, a4, bishop a3 is putting some pressure onto the c-pawn. We now see a5 from white. Black goes ahead and captures this pawn. There is no way for white to really defend it. Rook c1 is the move now, pinning the bishop. But of course, there's b6 to defend. And now, after g4, uh, black kind of made things a little bit difficult for himself here. Uh, he simply took this pawn on g4, which allows a nice tactic from white to try and get back into the game. And I'll let you at home uh, try and find it here. Uh, it's a very unique situation where uh, he can make these pawns on the queen side work to his advantage. Okay, hopefully you found it. The move is rook takes c5, and after b takes c5, b6. And the point is, this pawn is very, very close to queening, and it's going to be difficult to stop. With that in mind, perhaps a better move here for uh, black would be to simply play a move like d4, or if you try the same thing, uh, you're going to run into, after takes takes, uh, you're going to run into the fact that these pawns are moving a little bit faster up the board than in the other line. Instead though, f takes g4, rook c5 takes b6, takes takes, and now after rook c6, we see bishop c7, and this rook has to sacrifice itself for this b pawn. And now, despite being up a full piece, it turns out that uh, the black pawns are too much for white to deal with. We see bishop g6 uh, captures this pawn, bishop f5. White tries to keep this bishop on the board. Uh, four pawns would simply be too much in this endgame for one bishop to deal with. So we see bishop f3, and now c3, and this pawn is going to cause, uh, cause white some real problems. Uh, king g1, king f7, uh, bishop d4. This pawn comes to c2. Now after bishop b2, uh, black takes this opportunity to play d4, while this bishop is tied down to the c1 square. King f2, now e5, bishop d5 check, king f6, h4, but it's just not enough to stop all of these pawns for black. Bishop c1, and now e4. 
And after bishop b2, the king comes closer. We see bishop g8 hitting this pawn, simply h6, bishop back to c1, e3, 4, black. And now, if white wanted to, white could win a bishop with bishop h7, except he actually couldn't due to g6. So instead, bishop b2, now bishop e4 for black, bishop back to c1, g5, h5, g4, bishop h7 check, king e5, bishop back to g8. Now after e2, uh, white threw in the towel after the move, king f2, and d3. Uh, of course, white or black is simply queening by force here. You can give a check, the king will come back to d6. You can give another check if you want. King, the king will come back to c7. And after king e1, the bishop and the king are simply not enough to stop three passed pawns coming down the board. For example, bishop c4, simply g2. And if you want to stop this pawn, this pawn queens. If you want to stop this pawn, uh, I'll queen here, and then queen here. And like I said, two pieces, not enough to stop three pawns. And that is how Jordan von Forest managed to win this game. So another victory for you French defense fans out there. Keep taking those free pawns in the middle of the board and pretending your opening doesn't lose by force. Uh, of course, uh, White didn't have to hang this pawn, but uh, you know a definite victory for French players all around the world. There's not many of them. Enjoy it while you can. Uh, with that in mind, thank you so much for joining me this week on Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and I'll see you in the next episode.